So today we will be doing the second part of this tutorial and I will be showing you how we got the newspapers to float the way I did it in my video. So just let's import the image as plain and just click on the newspaper or whatever image you have and we can work with that and let's import that it doesn't have to be exactly like how i have it you can use any image and we can convert this into a movable floating object like what you saw in the scene earlier okay so now let's rotate it and make it flat like if it's lying down we will raise it up a bit we will create a plane and now you make this plane a collision object. Let's give it a color, let's make it a dark color. Increase it a bit, now we're going to make it a collision object. And that's it, now we will collect the paper, the newspaper and make it into a soft body. We will uncheck goal and we will check self collision. Let's subdivide this paper. You can give it up to six or five or four subdivisions. Depending on how powerful your system is, you can work with what you can be able to handle. Okay, so remember to uncheck goal and remember to click on self collision and put the bending to one so we have a bending effect on the paper when it flows okay so now we will right click and select wind force field wind we will rotate it a bit and we will also right click and choose turbulent this will give some variations in the movement of the paper so you see what it looks like this is what it looks like when you add wind and turbulence so now you change the wind strength to two and this is what you get a nice floating paper so now all you have to do is copy the paper and make multiple copies and once you're finished you have a lot of papers to float around in your scene if you see your simulation is moving a bit slow you to increase the speed just decrease the subdivisions of the paper so if you have six subdivisions just make it into four or five so you will have a better or smoother timeline animation okay so after you have finished completed modeling your buildings from the images i have displayed earlier this is what it's going to look like all i did was collect these images and just extrude some parts and enhance it a bit and that's how i got these buildings it's a quick way to make realistic background objects into your scene as you notice it's not very high detail because it's low quality images but this is what i use to create my environment well as you can see i already set up my scene but you can set it up the way you want to and for this broken or this destroyed looking building i will show you how i created this okay so to create the destroyed building we will create a uv sphere increase the size of it carry up a bit increase the size we will add a displacement modifier so let's look for displace good we will add in a cloud displace so it's going to give this rough look and we, get, we put it to shade smooth and now we will select the building and use a boolean modifier and we're going to subtract the displace cube now when you hide it boom here is your destroyed looking building you can do it in any form or way but 
this is just an example I'm giving you. So if you want to do a post-apocalyptic scene, this is a way you can use to destroy your buildings. Yes. So after you have done your paper simulation, just import it into your scene and place it wherever you desire. You don't have to create your scene exactly like how I have it, but you can do it whatever way you choose to. Because this is 3D art and 3D art is very subjective. So you can modify your scene and make it a bit different or even better than mine. So this is how it looks after I import it. I added this human character. You can get him from Mixamo. I'll put a link in the description. And this alien guy, I also got him from Mixamo. I'll also put the link to these characters in the description. You can put any character you like because Mixamo has a lot of free characters to use. So this is what the scene looks like. And now you can just set up your camera to follow the paper movement. You can choose whatever time you want it to move or you can choose how long you want the scene to be. Your choice. And for the camera movement, I created an empty object and I tracked it to the empty object by adding the object constraints. I use this in order to make my camera track the papers while they move. So it's easier to do it that way instead of keyframing every single movement. You just use an empty object, animate the empty object, and let the camera follow that empty object. And that is how I did this scene. So thank you for watching my tutorial and subscribe for more content. I will be doing a lot of content for you guys. So please subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.